Can you tell us yeah. a bit about what you do besides yeah, maybe art? I will give you a little bit of my background. Um, like right, right now, I'm I'm working full time on, on my art, but my but uh, but my background, I think, tells tells quite a lot about about how I how I got here. So um, so I, I started studying architecture in 2003 in Warsaw. Now I realized that it was 20 years ago already. Um, so and after graduating from it was at the Warsaw University of Technology. Then I left for Barcelona when I pursued my, my master's studies. That was uh, quite a turning point in my, in my life. And my, because, uh, you know, apart from meeting my husband, also professionally, I kind of changed my, my attitude towards, towards architecture. There I met some, some really, really awesome people. Uh, had, had amazing teachers, particularly one teacher in, in, in Barcelona. Do you know, you know Luis Fraguada? You know, Luis yes, Luis. Uh, I know he's also an artist, right? He was my teacher uh, at, in, in, at IAC Barcelona. Uh, like when I went there, I already had a certain background in coding, but it was the moment when I, I kind of make, make the link between uh, creating architecture, designing architecture, and my, my interest in, in, say, algorithmic approach to, to, to things. So I was introduced uh, properly to something that's called parametric design. In architecture, I I got to have some practice in it, and uh, I discovered I can apply mathematical and and, and algorithmic logic to uh, to creative processes. And can you tell us a bit about parametric design, uh, Jacek, for those that are yeah. Familiar? Okay. So um, so parametric design is a uh, is a pretty wide concept. Um, it encompasses everything from the use of custom algorithms uh, for automating certain parts of design process, like generation of complex geometries, um, uh, optimizing certain uh, uh, certain certain elements of of a building uh, using 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 algorithms and, and parameters, and it goes all the way to to a, a sort of philosophy of designing not by arbitrarily deciding on where to place a wall a window but shaping certain certain algorithmic rules that are behind the logic of architectural form and from that generating generating architecture okay and is this way of working uh, very common among architects these days i wouldn't say so i would say it's still a bit of a niche um, so today's today's use of of computational tools in general, I would say it's 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 mainly uh, using architects using a digital version of a drafting board. So basically, uh, we still draw plans and sections, but instead of using a pencil and a ruler, uh, we are using programs like like AutoCAD. There are also other uh, other movements like uh, building information modeling, famous BIM, which is like a system in which we we model buildings, but for every element of the model represents an architectural element supplemented with with with, uh, with architectural information manufacturer physical properties price even okay. but parametric design goes a little bit be, 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 goes a little bit beyond that it's, it's kind of a, um, it, it, it's kind of encourages architects to to create their own personalized tools uh, in order to be able to face uh, unique personalized uh, design problems yeah, I mean, I can, from that explanation, I can see the connection between generative art, um, right? Because it seems like similar in a way. And, and I wonder, when did you discover generative art? Was it uh, early on in your career as an architect or more towards the last few years? Okay, so um, I think it depends on how we how we define generative art, right? Because, because ever since I graduated from, from, from that master's degree in, in Barcelona, I already started working as someone that I would, I, would, I started calling myself a, a creative coder. So I started working in an architectural office uh, where I helped out automating uh, multiple architectural processes via coding. Technical aspects and, and aesthetic aspects. So I, we, uh, I would help create programs that would generate generate multiple options of uh, facade, uh, optimizing the distribution of buildings on the site. We would also create application interfaces, not only for myself, for, for ourselves, but but for for the clients to involve them in in the design process. 
Then after I left Barcelona, I, I, I moved back to Warsaw and I started teaching at my own university. I was teaching programming to architects, still, still, uh, still, like, let's, let's say category of, of, of creating coding. And then I, I, I moved from teaching like technical aspects to, uh, to teaching design studios when I encouraged, encouraged uh, students to, to implement algorithmic, algorithmic logic in designing. I did my PhD there. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, also, I also started working outside of academia uh, for a furniture designer from the Netherlands called Joris Larma. When my, my role was to, to create programs and scripts to, to help him generate complex geometries that would constitute the, the furniture they, they were designing. Well, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I mean, I can see synergy there uh, between your art, which we'll talk in a bit, um, and designing like this objects right like furniture um modern i can i can see how that translates to what you usually create 